and they corner you and they press against you and push you back up against a wall to where you must listen to what they say. And they say, we are currently engaged in a fascinating experiment, Julia. Yes, yes, a fascinating experiment. And we could certainly use your help seeing it to its conclusion. Fall, you can frame up your scene. And then maybe Addy can join you in the middle of it. I'm thinking maybe I go out and try to get my keys. Like I bet my mom would probably be like, don't leave your keys out in the middle of the forest for, you know, no reason. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's good. When you're getting ready to get your stuff or getting ready to go, Shay's like, can we just go back in the, like tomorrow morning? There's no way that like anyone's going to find them at night. It should be okay, right? Well, there could be like animals and stuff that... Yeah. They're going to steal your keys and break into your house? What do you, I don't understand what you're worried about here. I like throw out my hands of like magpies. I just take the keys, put it in the <laughs> nest. I never find it again. He's like, oh, I just think it's not, I just don't think it's safe fall. I mean, there's a killer out there and we don't know who it is. It could be anybody. Do you really think the killer's going to be roaming around out here in the woods when they killed somebody in the school though? We're pretty far out here. Uh, we, why was that mechanic guy out here? And I give him like kind of a weird look. I'm like, we need to talk about that later too. Cause I remember he was saying, he was thinking that he was coming closer when he wasn't right. I'm like, it'll be five minutes. I just need to get the keys. You stay here with mom, you know, help her cut some potatoes or whatever. And, and I'll be right back. No big deal. Indeed. Trust me that I like do the, the, punch on the shoulder (laughs) he's like all right we'll just be careful out there i do like the flex (laughs) (laughs) so you go out there i think this might be a a good time to run into addy right maybe she's cutting across the woods to get to your house or whatever right Mm -hmm. Um, and you know maybe addy do you have a car or fall lives in a pretty remote part of town right or a pretty remote place so you have a rich family I was going to say, I probably do. You uh, took mom's Buick or took, whatever. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> <laughs> she's passed out drunk. She's not going to use it anytime. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, just prevented from drinking and driving, right? So, yeah, I think probably, like, you'll see the headlights, you know, approaching, but you can't tell who's in the car or who it is. What do you do, Fall? I don't know. I think instinctually I, like, put myself behind a tree, even though I don't even know why I do it. <laughs> yeah. okay. The car pulls up. It's not... Addie's car, or Jacqueline's car. It's actually one of the police truck, and it kind of pulls up and it kind of stops. Are you going to like make yourself known, or are you going to just try to stay hidden? I think I'll stay hidden. I I think I have like substantial reason to think that the police are acting kind of weird after the conversation with my mother and then the one in the parking lot when they were just like just. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. <laughs> right, yeah. They go up a little further and stop. This is on the road, like out, you know, kind of in the boonies or whatever. And you see Sheriff Nichols get out. He's got a flashlight. And I think I want you to keep your cool to, like, not be seen. Yeah. That's, it's totally. fair to say you're probably afraid of being seen, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Seven, eight. If you don't show yourself... Sheriff Nichols will think you are Eddie, the spiral, well, the mechanic, who's probably the spiral killer. He'll think he's talking to you. Oh, that's enticing. <laughs> do you want to keep it. trying to be in the shadows, be hidden? He won't see you, yeah. but he'll just be talking to you. Yeah, I think so. I'll, I'll let him evil villain monologue. So he's kind of waving the flashlight around, right? And he says, Eddie, I hear you over there. It's fine. Stay there. It's no big deal. I've been driving around all over looking for you. I don't know what has got you going right now, son. I don't know what it is. I thought we had this under control. I mean, you've been spending all those months, all that, all those months with Dr. Forsyth. I don't know why. What happened, son? You were making such good progress. Uh, And then you wait for a little bit, right? And he's like, all right, all right. (sighs) Fine, fine. Look, 
this is all going to be over soon. All right. If you won't come home or if you won't come with me, if you insist on being out here doing this, we're going to let it play out to its conclusion. But you're making a lot of work for us right now, son. A whole lot of work. It's going to take us a hell of a lot of time and a lot of effort to get everything back to normal. But we will. We will do it. We will get everything back to normal. And just trust we're not going to let anyone do anything to you because of this. Everything's going to be just fine. You're going to go back to having your sessions. Dr. Forsyth, you're going to go back to doing what you do, working on cars. It's all going to be A-OK. -okay. But I got to say, I'm not happy about this. Coach DeVries, my friend, and that piece of shit, Robbie, was I'm sure someone loved him. All right, then. And then he like goes to get back and he, and he like rolls the window down and he's like, we still haven't found Heather, just so you know. We're probably going to. You got any tips? You want to tell me where you stashed her body? That'd be great. All right, fine. And he starts the engine and continues on down. I think Paul is like, holy crap. <laughs> and I think uh, I'll go back to like searching for my car keys, but and after that, I'll go to, I'll probably, my plan is to go to my mother, which should be interesting based on Mercy Falls parenting from before. Well, I was probably when Adeline's car pulls up too at this point, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. As you're like, maybe right as you found, maybe, did you find your keys? See, I don't know. I don't think you found yeah, your I keys. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you found your keys, but you do eventually like run into Adeline on the road. So you guys can have that scene. Yeah, like maybe I get so spooked from the conversation that as soon as he leaves, I like pause for a beat and then I start running and maybe I even dart in front of the road to like cut across to get to my house and that's when Addie is coming and you like hopefully stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like pump on the brakes and there's like screeching noises or car comes to a halt <laughs> right in front of you. <laughs> Sasquatch um, in headlights. <laughs> And then she'll look at you and like the, from the headlights that have like illuminated against the backdrop of the forest or like door gate. And then she'll scramble out of her car and like shut the door behind her and just like stare at you for a second. It's like, and you, just, look, like, you look normal, right? Like as far as I can tell. I'm curious about that too. Like, oh. <laughs> I, I, well, I was going to say like, I think one thing I think is worth interesting is like, if you look dramatically different, he would notice that right now, right? If it's subtle differences like eye color or something like that, like he wouldn't notice that in this low light. I think it is like eye color. Like maybe it's a bit more like mottled, sneaky, like green. And I kind of like to think that her cheekbones are like a little bit higher. And like if you like if you squint, you can kind of like recognize old Adeline, but there's definitely bits about her that make you think Jacqueline. Okay. So it's like in a, I, I probably wouldn't notice as like a teenage boy, to be honest. <laughs> but <laughs> That's cool. Um, I think I go up to you and put my hands on your shoulder and I'm like, can you give me a ride? I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she looks up at you and she's like, oh shit. Like if your story is like my story, then we've got a lot of good stories to exchange because <laughs> I don't know who I am anymore. It's just <laughs> things of, things, a lot of things that happened tonight and and I, and I just need to talk to you. Are you like saying this like flustered or broke? Like, are you breaking down or? Flustered. Yeah. Flustered. Okay. He just like goes around to the passenger seat and he's like, tell me everything. And then she'll slip into the driver's seat and have her hands in her lap. And it's like, and she like tries to keep it together for a moment as she's trying to like describe what's happened to her this evening. And she can't quite find the words for it. And she's just like, I need a hug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure, yeah, you'll get a hug. Sasquatch hug. I don't have that move yet, but if I did, it would be a really, a much better hug, maybe even. But <laughs> <laughs> I literally have a move about hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a hugs move? <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, I think it's more about shielding people from danger, but it's still interesting. Is this a turn someone on, or is this, or is this more? I was, I was angling for that. Well, like, so, who versus who, I guess, is the question. What direction? 
I'm, I'm part of it's Adeland, so I had my mind, like, you know, as Paul hugs Adeland, it's like his touch is like that much warmer because her skin is like really sensitive and fresh and new. And maybe it's like she sort of leads her like head into his neck. Like it just, he smells a lot more evocative, earthy and humany and just like what she needs right now. I bet that exchange with the sheriff and then running across the road would make me sweat again too. <laughs> 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 So probably, so we're so we're saying then that that fall is rolling, turns one on. I think you go both ways, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I actually I think then like Adeline sort of like maybe draws back a little bit, and like they're very very like close together, and then she sort of looks at him like both roll it, right? Yeah, yeah I guess so. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Six five. <laughs> okay. Oh wow! Yeah, I got a six. <laughs> Ooh, two fails. <laughs> Woof. Oh, damn. Uh, it's fine. It's probably fine. <laughs> it's probably fine. We're going to cut for a minute while you guys have a little more. <laughs> you don't have conditions you can use against each other to push you over? It wouldn't matter for me. Yeah, um, we had, one of them was a five, so um, um, we had the six. Can I increase it by one? He, it's, he's got hillbilly and gay for Shay. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you can sure if either of those apply. No, <laughs> yeah. no. no. <laughs> and you could, uh, oh no, you don't have a string on me either. So I, I think yeah. I, uh, I have one on you, right? Do you? Yeah. Yeah, if you have one string, you can bump, you can, if you want to get to a seven. Oh yeah, right? yeah. I was yeah, I'll bump, I'll bump it to a seven. Okay, all right. <laughs> that'll, that'll, uh, that'll reduce the severity of what's probably going to happen. <laughs> Significantly, a seven will turn someone on. They can either give you a string, so this is your choice, Paul. You can give oh. her a string or choose one of the reactions. Hmm, what do I think the most interesting thing would be? Promise something that I think you want. So, what would I think that you want? I think from what you have said so far, I think I would, interestingly enough, and I think actually following with the tone of the movie or TV show, even. I would unprioritize what I'm about to tell you about the killer, ironically, and only listen to what you're uh, saying. Like, be there for you, and then tell you what I have to tell you later. So I think he, still in the hug, just says, tell me, tell me everything. What I had, you know, doesn't matter. Hmm. Let's go to Adam. Chad comes up to meet the two of you. He sees you both. He's wearing like a sort of like mint green Lacoste polo, right? With a collar popped and like kind of chino shorts or whatever, right? Uh, and like loafers or like boat shoes, right? Very, you know, yeah. <laughs> Fuck Chad. <laughs> Chad. <laughs> and he comes up and he's like, he sees you both. And he's like, well, if this party wasn't already lame enough, here we go at the two of you. And Debbie's like, Oh my God, I know. And she turns and she's getting ready to leave. Adam, what do you do? Chad, Abby invited us. She will be here any minute. <laughs> Addy invited the two of you? Yep. Wait, I'm so confused. And then I think Debbie is like, I am not hanging around for this. I'm not going to sit here and be insulted when you did invite me, Chad. Don't you remember? He doesn't remember doing that. And she's like, ugh. And she's just like stomping off and she's going to leave. She's mad. And he's like, ah, whatever. Fuck her. No, no, no. Hey, De Debbie, just give it a chance. I want to spend my string to convince her to stay. Oh, nice. Good. I think what it will take for her to stay is, and this is private away from Chad. She's like, I'll stay. Fine. But you have to promise me that you will not let me be alone with that guy. Okay, that's that's a promise. Yeah, so you guys go, and he's like, and Chad is there, and he's like, he's like, oh, did you change your mind, sweetheart? He's like, well, good. Why don't you two losers come on in? I've got a keg. Uh, we've got a keg out back. Um, there's plenty to drink because no one's here. You go inside, and like the house is like just it's. I mean, they're very rich. Like it's it's very luxurious. Like yeah. lots of beautiful furniture and artwork and all that kind of stuff. Track lighting everywhere, right? And there are a couple of people milling around. Like, it's a pretty lame party, all things considered. Where do you head? What do you do? I take a beer. That's the, the first thing to do. Mm -hmm. I take a sip, 
dislike the taste, but uh, keep drinking anyway and uh, say something like, so that's one of Chad's famous parties. I kind of expected more. And Debbie's like, uh, yeah, um, I guess I guess it's all the stuff that's happening today. I mean, personally, I feel safer in a big group like this, you know, or in a group like this rather than like, you know, being at my house in my room alone, like in a horror movie. Yeah, teenagers are never in a, at a party in a horror movie. <laughs> She's like, well, I mean, I think just the stupid ones get killed in horror movies, right? Yeah, then you're safe. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm sure Sheriff Nichols has it well in hand. I mean, I don't know, but... I, I'm, I'm not sure. He seems pretty shady. What do you mean? That he talked with... Uh... With this weird mechanic guy, and it all seemed kind of conspirative. Huh. And then I think we'll just cut there for a minute. Julia, your parents have told you about a, a terrific new intellectual venture that they want you to participate in. And they say, it's very easy, dear. You don't have to do much at all. We have been led to believe that you're going to a party. That's what your friend told us earlier today. Yes. Well, all we need you to do is when you go, make sure that any sort of front gate or locked door, maybe even a couple of windows, make sure they are open. You know, casual like. Afraid right now to ask them what the purpose of this is. And your mother says, I... Julia, it's okay. We just are curious about gauging some reactions. I get a cigarette out because I smoked quite early in this family because smoking is part of what we do as a family kind of activity. And you we usually enter a certain here. trance then. And when we do so, we negotiate on a very serious level. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's good. So they want something from me. I might need something from them in exchange. What is the trance like? Do you like feel like you're in another place? Do you feel like you're another person? Like how does your, how does the environment change for you? How does your perception change when you're doing the smoke trance? Interestingly, we learned from the trance I had together with Paul that it very much depends on the other person. Mm -hmm. A couple of things are similar though, mm -hmm. which is there's only one essential element which is vision mm -hmm. and the vision is only in black and white and i usually participate completely passively in an activity the others usually do when they feel completely comfortable like with paul i was running through a forest on his back mm -hmm. sitting on his back while he was running and for my parents i'm very curious about like when do they feel comfortable actually that's a very good question i think you find yourself in, they have like a sh like an office or a study, right? And that office and study is normally like piled up with books and papers and binders and like just tons of just office material kind of piled up all over the place. Kind of like Uncle Nicholas's shop, right? Less chemical though. Tons of books and papers and research materials and all kinds of stuff piled up everywhere, right? Like, like a horde of research materials, right? And you find yourself there, except you're not in their study. You're in a much bigger space. It's like the study has been transported into like this large cavernous space, right? And their research seems to go on forever and ever, all around you in all directions. Just tons and tons of like data and paperwork and books and tomes that get older and older as you spread out in a radius from the center point. And they're both there, sitting in chairs directly across from you. You're on one side of the desk and they're on the other sides next to each other. And they say, this town is very, very interesting, Julia. Very interesting indeed. And you're going to help us learn more about it. I think we'll just cut there for a second. You get to the cabin, the house, and Shay runs out 
the front door. He's like running at you, at the car, right? And he like runs up and he has to like slam his hands on the hood of the car to like catch himself, right? He's like running so fast. And he's like, oh, oh my God, oh my God. Like something's wrong, something's wrong. And the like the headlights are framing him pretty ominously, hey? Yeah, um, yeah. I think Fall, yeah, like gets out of the car and says, what is it, what is it? He's like, I, I don't know. Like, you're, you're, it, it, I, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm freaking out right now. I'm just, I'm freaking out. Your, your, your mom heard something out back, and she went to go investigate, and and I had an eye on her. I was, I saw her, and she had her, she had her, her flashlight, and then the flashlight just went off, and she's not responding. I've been yelling and yelling. I don't know where she's at. I don't know what happened. I'm like, okay, don't panic, and I, I run into the cabin, and I bet my dad has like a specific lockbox or whatever for like a rifle or a gun or something like that, and I try to get at that. Yeah, good, good, good. You, you can do that. Can you keep your cool, though? What are you scared is going to happen? I'm scared that my mom is hurt outside or she's not responding for a legitimate reason. I don't think she's reading books on tape out there. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, that's a hard fail. <laughs> Five, <laughs> again. <laughs> but you're I... going for the gun. You're, you're trying to do that thing. And I think like while you're like busy doing that, Addie, you, you and Shay are just there in the living room, right? Yeah. And, and Shay like looks at you, Addie, and he says, it's the weirdest thing. She heard some kind of noise out there. And I told her not to go. I told her to wait. But she just insisted on going out into the dark. No one listens to me anymore about this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, why didn't you go after her? He's like, I don't know. And then, like, if you look down, you'll see that Shay is, maybe it's just a little nervous tick. It's a little unclear. But you'll see Shay like drawing his finger in a spiral, scratching his forearm pretty deep, actually, while he's talking to you. To look at it and be like, are you, are you okay? He's like, oh, and he sees and like, you can see his like, you know, he's like scratched himself up a little bit. He's like, oh, I've been doing that lately. And like, you can see he's got like a couple of other like little fingernail scratches on his arms. Addie looks at him and she's like, um, I, I'm, so, I, I'm sorry, I need to go to the bathroom real quick. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just whatever you do, don't go out in the woods. No, I, no I just, I'll, I'll be safe, don't worry. She's going to sort of like try and excuse herself to find fall. Sure, sure. You do. And then she's like, um, I, I don't know what to say. Shay, Shay's in there doing some weird spiral things like on Robbie's. Uh, like on Robbie? What do you mean, like on Robbie? But I, <laughs> and I, like, the whole time I'm like trying to get this lockbox open. <laughs> you know, like on um, his his body, like we, we went in there and there were spirals on him and blood and Shay's doing the same thing in the room and he was the last one I saw your mom. Did you actually have to go to the bathroom? No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm like, that's fucked up. And then I finally get the lockbox open and I grab the gun and get at the bullets or whatever. And I'm like, but one one problem at a time. First, we got to get my mom. Then we'll deal with this spiral thing. So just make sure Shay's okay. And I'm going to I'm gonna go look for mom. And I hunt around for like another flashlight. You can grab a flashlight. Are you going to you trek out into the woods? Yeah. Do you stay in the house or do you go with fall? Uh, I think she'd like to go with Fall, but she is also conscious. Like Shay is young, <laughs> so I think I think Addie will be like, "No, I, I'm coming with you." I think uh, Fall is like, "Okay, we either we we all go, or two of you guys stay." So if you're coming, then Shay, are you cool with coming too? I don't I don't want us to be left alone just in case something messed up is going on. He's like, uh, "Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm." Uh, I'm cool with staying here. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. I just hope your mom's okay. Yeah. And I think that spurs him into action even more and like goes out with the flashlight x file style. Good. As you guys go out, there's like a little like concrete step down, you know, from the house that goes, you know, out to the woods. You know, maybe it's like a little path that just ends eventually, right? As you get to the tree line. Adeline, you're going to notice as the flashlight pans back and forth in the darkness, you're going to notice little droplets of blood on the concrete. 
<laughs> um, I, I think she'll should point them out with like a trembling hand. I think Fall like shivers visibly and then looks at the like when he looks at the blood and then he one hand he like gives you the flashlight so you can point it and then with his other like now free hand he takes your hand and he's like we'll do this together and then we move forward. She'll squeeze his hand tightly and stand a little bit closer because she's terrified. I should point out that like there are a few droplets of blood and it's not clear like what direction they came from going away from the house or going into the house. Yeah, well, I don't think we'd be able to tell anyway. We're like yeah. chock full of adrenaline and freaked out anyway. You need to keep your cool for seeing the blood, both of you. What are you afraid is going to happen? Hi, listeners. This is Jason. If you are enjoying Mercy Falls 83, please consider supporting The Gauntlet on Patreon. There are a lot of costs associated with producing Pocket Size Play, from editing, uh, hosting fees, music licenses, and more. Your Patreon pledge helps pay for all of that stuff and indeed encourages us to create more Pocket Size Play. As a bonus, if you pledge $2 or more, you also get early access to Pocket Size Play episodes, which is pretty cool. So go to patreon.com forward slash gauntlet and support the show today. Thanks.